In developing countries, the informal workforce represents anywhere from half to 90% of the workforce. And we also estimate that the informal economy generates probably 40 to 60% of the GDP. Of course, creating more formal jobs would be ideal, but the trends suggest that that is not happening, that there's um, economic growth often is not accompanied by as much employment growth. And so we need a focus on generating uh, new jobs, but we also need a focus on preserving existing livelihoods if we're going to address poverty and inequality. What we know from the official data is that if you take the share of women workers who are in informal employment, it's always higher than the share of men workers in informal employment. It does not mean, however, that the majority of informal workers are men, are women, because there's often a, a lower labor force participation rate among women. And we also know, and this again is official data, that within the informal economy, the higher earning segment, which is informal self-employed who hire others, women tend to be underrepresented in that segment, and they tend to be overrepresented in the lower earning segments as unpaid contributing family workers in the family firm or the family farm, or many of them are industrial outworkers, subcontracted workers who are paid by the piece. We are very concerned about cities because of urbanization, the fact that more than half the world's population lives in cities now, and also the fact that often cities are deindustrializing at the same time that they're growing in terms of population. And this means that uh, employment in the cities is often informal. But then you add the urban renewal schemes, the cities that want to become modern, um, world-class cities, and often that means the destruction of the existing livelihoods in the informal economy. So we've got a real, a real choice as development specialists of what kind of cities, what kind of urban economies we are going to promote. Capital is global, <laughs> and labor needs to be global as well, the workforce. And they learn a lot from being organized in their own settings, but also from learning from other organizations, particularly organizations in the same sector. So waste pickers in Latin America learn something from waste pickers in India or in South Africa. Domestic workers learn that the problems they faced, they felt very isolated in a private home, are shared by millions of domestic workers around the country and the, and the world. And they learn strategies from each other. They learn how to negotiate with employers, how to negotiate with the city. So a lot of shared experience. <laughs>